506. A psychometric chart is provided on page 83 for your possible use in answering this question. A room in a building has the following characteristics. Sensible heat gain, 90,000 BTU per hour. Latent heat gain, 40,000 BTU per hour. Supply air to the room, 3600 CFM at 55 degrees dry bulb. The room is kept at 78 degrees dry bulb, 45% relative humidity. Outdoor air conditions are 92 degrees dry bulb, 76 wet bulb. Outdoor air ventilation for the room is 700 CFM. The cooling coil entering air temperature and leaving air temperature respectively are most nearly what? And they've given us the entering air temperature and leaving air temperature both in terms of dry bulb and wet bulb for each. So there's a lot of information here. In all cases, the leaving coil temperature is 55 degrees because that was given to us. So we know for a fact that that's the case. Uh, in order to work through this, let's draw a picture of the scheme so that we can be really clear about what's going on. We know the conditions in the room are 78 degrees dry bulb and 45% relative humidity. And then there's some extract from the room because there's 700 CFM of fresh air being introduced. So there must be exhaust air of the same volume, 700 CFM. And then the rest of the air gets recirculated so that's the remainder is 3,600 total, so 2,900 CFM of recirculated air. And then there's outside air being introduced, and the outside air is 92 degrees, that's dry bulb, and then the wet bulb is 76 degrees. And then those two streams are mixing, so we'll label that a uh, mixed air condition. And then that's the air that's entering the coil, some air handler here, AHU. And then off of that coil, we have this supply air to the room of a known volume, 3600 CFM, and a known dry bulb temperature of 55 degrees, but we don't know the wet bulb. So that's pretty much the situation. And since each answer has all these different choices, we actually don't need to necessarily find everything. Probably the fastest way to work through this is just to find this mixed air temperature, and then we'll know the entering air dry bulb temperature, which is these guys. and they're all different, so if we can find the one that matches, we're done. So let's just mix the recirculated air of a known dry bulb temperature and the outside air of a known dry bulb temperature. That's a quick and easy mixing calculation, and we'll be done. So the mixed air dry bulb temperature is gonna be mostly the recirculated air, which is 2900 CFM of 78 degree air, but then it's mixed with 700 CFM of 92 degree air. And that's divided by the total volume of 3600 and that's 80.7 degrees fahrenheit which is consistent with answer choice b so if you were really working this problem in a test environment i would say stop you're done you got the answer move on time is precious uh, because we're doing these problems for practice let's go ahead and find the other two as well uh, the wet bulb for the mixed air and also the wet bulb for the supply air just so you know just so you would know how to do that if that's what they were asking for. So just as we did a mixed air calculation for the dry bulb, we could do something very similar for the wet bulb. The conditions in the room are fully defined, so let's look up a couple more things from the psychrometric table about the room condition. We can find the wet bulb temperature from the psych chart based on these two pieces of information. I'm getting 63.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And then let's also get the enthalpy at the same time inside the room is 29.5 BTU per pound. So we can do a very similar mixing calculation using the wet bulb temperatures. So let's say TMA wet bulb. Well, that would be 2900 CFM of 63 and a half wet bulb plus 700 CFM of 76 wet bulb divided again by the total volume and that works out to 65.9 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty close to 66.2. The error is probably coming from me grabbing the wet bulb temperature off the psych chart, not doing that perfectly. So I'll say that's close enough and supports our answer. And now to find the wet bulb temperature of the discharge air off the coil that's ultimately supplying the room, that's gonna be a little trickier, but not too bad. We can say, the total heat load, because we were given more information that we didn't even use, right? We were given the sensible and latent heat loads. So between those two, we have a total load of 130,000 BTU per hour. So we can say the total cooling load 
is m dot delta h, where delta h is the difference in the enthalpy in the room and the enthalpy of the supply air, call that h supply. So if we algebraically arrange this to solve for the enthalpy of the supply air, so if we know the enthalpy of the supply, we can know the wet bulb pretty easily. That's going to be h room minus q total over the mass flow rate. H room we looked up earlier, that was 29.5 BTU per pound minus 130,000 BTU per hour. And the mass flow rate, we know the volume flow rate is 3,600 CFM, so feet cubed per minute, times 60 minutes in an hour, gets rid of minutes. And we also have to divide that by the specific volume, because we're trying to get it to be a mass flow rate. And I looked up the specific volume of the room air, just figuring that would be close enough, so I got 13.7 cubic feet per pound from the psych chart. So that gets rid of cubic feet, and we also get rid of hours, so we should be left with BTU per pound when all this is said and done. So the enthalpy of the supply air is 21.3 BTU per pound. And from the psych chart, there's an almost perfectly linear relationship between enthalpy and wet bulb temperature, so it's very quick and easy on the left side of the psych chart along, along that uh, saturation curve to use that enthalpy to find the corresponding wet bulb temperature, which is about 51 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is also consistent with our answer choice B51. So it looks like we got it, all three to kind of match up. So it's very encouraging.